Hello there. Well, this is one of these days where you kind of wonder whether you should have gone out or not. And for a number of reasons, I haven't quite felt 100% the last week or so. I've been fighting some kind of virus. I don't think it was coronavirus. I tested myself twice. Um, that said, you know, we've been sort of masked up for the last couple of years and I, I seem to be kind of getting everything that's going around pretty badly. I had something about a month or so ago, it just affected me quite badly, whatever it was. Um, but, um, I mean, I, I remember when I did get COVID at the very start of the whole thing in March 2020, and one of the first sort of early symptoms before I realised that I had it was I remember at work and feeling a strange uh, skin sensitivity uh, in my scalp. It was just, it felt kind of strange and sensitive. And I've had that again in the last couple of days, which made me wonder if it might have been COVID. Um, you know, just testing uh, negative twice doesn't necessarily mean that you're in the clear. Um, but whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm not kind of shedding virus or anything. Um, and I did feel much better today. Um, the other reason is that the weather is changeable. The forecast is, um, one BBC weather forecast says that it's, you know, sh showery, 20 or 30% chance of showers, so, um, sh sunshine and showers. Uh, another, uh, I think it's a Met Office forecast, gave a kind of mixed picture again. <laughs> with the potential for thunder at one point, you know. So nobody really knows how it's going to go. It's changeable. I might be lucky and uh, dodge the showers, or it just might be a total disaster. But sometimes in life, you've got to take a chance. It looks wet up there just now. They were clear just a couple of minutes ago, so it's changeable. We might be lucky and get some good views. Let's uh, take a chance and go for it. An initial plan to visit Garrow Glen and the Covenanters Cave was a non-starter. I got the cave location mixed up, ended up looking at the wrong cave, which wasn't even a cave, right, okay, so and the path was so soft and slippy I reckoned it was just too dangerous to continue. Let's just get out of here. Um, I've made it to the tank my down the road, it's just behind the camera. I'm going to be a little bit grateful for some tarmac, I think. The field that's just come through has got a mixture of animals in it. There are cows with calves, and you've always got to be really very careful coming through such a field. And if you had a dog with you, you would avoid the field totally. Um, 
whenever I come through such a field, you know, the, the cows can be a little bit protective of their calves and they can be a danger to you. And I always keep one eye uh, looking out for a quick escape route. It just makes a lot of sense to do that, you know. Uh, as I said at the start of the video, it's, it's a mixed picture weather-wise. It, it's just sunshine and shower. Sunshine happening behind me and there's uh, big black ones just behind the camera. Sometimes you don't realise that the landscape that you're walking through is absolutely packed with history. And at times it's only when you look at old maps that you can maybe realise that. Because some old features aren't always um, marked on modern maps. I think most of them probably are. Um, just over there there's a nondescript looking low rectangular, I think it's brick or stone built thing. And you wouldn't really throw it a second glance. But um, in actual fact, it's, uh, um, it, it's covering a, a feature known as St Mirren's Well. Uh, given the name St Mirren, it must have been at some point a holy well. And uh, it's all been covered over and out of sight. Some of these holy wells were nothing more than some water trickling out the ground. and Not a great deal to look at in their own right. But it's obviously been important in the past something that people would visit, hence why you can see it on old maps. And of course you're probably wondering, uh, tack me down the road, where, where, does, where does that name come from? And um, I don't know, but I'm going to have a pretty good bash at guessing, and I'll fill you in shortly. So let's get onto the road and uh, head further uphill. Speaking. Well, this is the the car park at the highest point in the uh, Tack Madoon Road. <sighs> One thing I need to remember to do when I'm on these walks and making these videos is, in addition to keeping one eye open for an exit when I'm going through a field with cows and calves is to switch my flaming phone off. <laughs> the folk phoning you up about the car crash that you had, you know. I'm frequently getting contacted by people, they must be seers, sort of Nostradamus type people, they can see into the future and it's about that car crash, Mr Burns. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have a car crash. And I don't even have a car. Is that a nuisance, these folk are? I usually I like to keep them on the line as long as possible to really hack them off. Uh -huh, when, what was that? When, when was that? What, what accident was that again? Uh-huh. Yes, I see. Uh-huh. Yep. 
but eventually they've put the phone down. This is a sturdy picnic bench. No wooden benches here, this is solid. <laughs> solid metal. This will still be here when Armageddon blows us all off the face of the earth. So, um, the tank my Dunes Road, you think, well, what, what does that mean? The Tank Madoon Road runs from Colsaith to the Carden Bridge. The road actually continues from the Carden Bridge to Stirling, but I think it's only called the Tank Madoon Road between Colsaith and the Carden Bridge. And I think it must have been a, a drove road hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, it's a very steep hilly road, you know, just walking up it's a bit of a, a breathless uh, thing. Um, I mean obviously, Tack Madoon, it sounds like take me down. And I think that's probably exactly what it means. Um, I've looked at old maps and the only old map, I mean I can see it on the first edition Ordnance and Survey maps, it's clearly marked the road is called Tack Madoon the Road in the early 19th, sorry, mid 19th century. But the only other uh, older map that I've seen it mentioned, or seen the name it mentioned, is a 1780 map that I'll show you just in a, a second. Uh, and it, the spelling's slightly different, it's called Tack Madoon. Still sounds like Take Me Down. Um, now, the curious thing about that 1780 map is it, it's not clear what the name Tack Madoon is associated with. It's not like it's running along the side of the road to indicate that the road's called that. Maybe in those days they didn't have the ability to turn letters different ways. <laughs> Maybe all the all the words and letters had to run horizontally. <laughs> um, I mean it, it, it looks as if it's beside a, a little kind of hillock. That's what it looks like it's beside. But I mean, when you look at that map, there are there are steadings with names, and there are hills with names. There's names, ever, all sorts of things have got names. The steadings that have got names, you can see a tiny little black rectangle indicating a building. Clearly that's a steading or a farm of some sort. Um, there isn't one beside the Tack Down name. That's not to say that it wasn't a steading at some time way before then, and maybe the names persisted. Don't really know that. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the name on that 1780 map is positioned actually round about here. You can see how it sort of lines up. You can, I mean, these early maps, they're not, the scale's not that great and it's hard to figure out exactly what's going on. But you can get a pretty good idea just by looking at where the hills are and various steadings. You can, you know, um, there's a number of steadings shown. I mean, there is, you can see on that map, um, there's a place called Lees. And that's sort of at the foot of a kind of elongated bit of hilling. And you can see that, and that runs towards this road. And um, it runs towards right here, which is a viewpoint. And this, as I say, it's no coincidence that this is the highest point on the Tack Madoon Road, the 322 metres. Whether the name uh, Tack Me Down was, uh, as I say, just relating to an earlier steading that was no longer there, or whether it just relates to this viewpoint or this location because it's the highest point on this road and whichever way you go you're going to be going down take me down that's what I think if you've got any thoughts on the matter by all means drop me a comment um, I'm just going to stop for a quick lunch here um, from here given that this is 322 metres above sea level I'm heading west from here to the, the trig point on the top of a little hill called Tom Tain 
and just on the other side of that I'll drop down uh, a footpath that I'll I think join f roughly where I was earlier on. Uh, given that Tom Tain's only 453 metres high, you know, so f from here we've only got uh, 131 metres of height from here, so you know, we're almost there height wise. And we've been pretty lucky with the weather. There's been a few showers, but on the whole, it's been okay. I was having a pee there, and there was a thrush watching me. It's, it's a no privacy these days, you know. Anyway, oh, <laughs> we'll see you shortly on that track leading to Tom Tain. Oh, I am loving this. You have no idea. I've not been on this path before ever. And I could see Tom Tain uh, up ahead. And it just looks like a lovely little hill. Quite a pronounced bump. It's just glorious. There's a wee bit of wind. That's going to limit the amount of footage I'll be able to take towards the top. But, um... If I kind of keep the camera zoomed out, I think that probably will reduce the amount of visible shake. It's just, it's just beautiful. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Pile of stones and a scale of one to ten, it's a three. Not very comfortable. Hopefully, you can hear me. It's a bit windy, and I'm at the top of Tom Tain. Trick points just behind the camera. What a glorious walk it's been! And you know, for such a small hill, the views are out of this world, they really are. Obviously, I can see. Um, everything on the, the southern face of the Campsie Fells, you know, Glasgow, everything in that direction. Um, 
just behind me, I can also see the Ockle Hills towards Stirling. And to the east, oh yeah. I mean, I can see the three bridges at Queensferry heading towards Edinburgh, just uh, at the side over the River Forth. Although the weather's showery and I can see showers all over the place, I can also see, and I've used this phrase before, daply dods of sunshine. You just can't beat a daply dod of sunshine. And it's actually a very clear day, I can see. I just, I can see for, you know, you don't always get to see as far as the, the three bridges at Queen's Ferry. But they're actually very clear, you know. You know, sometimes it's good to get out. I, I, I did wonder, as I said at the start of the video, whether I should go today. I hadn't been feeling that great the last week. I sensed that I was feeling much better. I sweated buckets in bed last night. I probably sweated it out of me, whatever it was. Um, and as I say, the weather was a bit hit and miss, but I've cracked it, you know. It's just been absolutely glorious. And from here, I'm hoping uh, uh, there's an obvious path, as was signposted back there, that will head down back into Kilsyth. There is a chance. I think you can carry on and go over another little hill, head further into the Campsie Fells. Uh, I'm just going to go down into Kilsyth and hopefully I'll be able to find that path. Just a case of going down, basically. Or as the saying goes, tack me down. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.